on World News Tonight. Congressional grillings. TikTok CEO faces the heat of the US Congress with testimony that failed to assure user safety. New threats. North Korea is testing the waters both politically and on a military scale with the development of new artillery. Shaky grounds. Netanyahu struggles to hold his coalition on firm footing with the stubborn proceedings of judicial overhaul. Ordeal on stage. Kiev's prima ballerina owes audiences on point here with her rendition of Black Swan. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening to you this Friday night. We begin today's program with a story on TikTok. TikTok is on the hot seat as CEO shows issues testimony before Congress did little to assuage worries over TikTok's China-based parent company by tenants and added fresh momentum to lawmakers caused to ban the platform nationwide. TikTok CEO in the hot seat Thursday. Shozi Chu faced hours of tough questions from U.S. lawmakers at a congressional hearing who are convinced the Chinese-owned short video app should be barred for being a potential national security threat to the United States. Committee Chair Republican Kathy McMorris-Rogers. TikTok collects nearly every data point imaginable, from people's location to what they type and copy, who they talk to, biometric data and more. We do not trust TikTok will ever embrace American values, values for freedom, human rights, and innovation. TikTok has repeatedly chosen the path for more control, more surveillance, and more manipulation. TikTok says it has more than 150 million American users. The company has faced sharp accusations that its U.S. user data would be shared with the Chinese government and that it fails to adequately protect children from harm. Chu began his testimony by highlighting his Singaporean roots and tried to show the company is independent from the Chinese government. We do not promote or remove content at the request yeah, of the, the Chinese government. It is our commitment to this committee and all our users that we will keep this free from any manipulation by any okay. government. Chu's testimony capped a week of actions by the Chinese company aimed at convincing Americans and their lawmakers that the app creates economic value and supports free speech amid growing calls to ban it. Several members of the committee also pressed Chu about their concerns about the lack of content moderation on the platform, including Republican Representative Bob Latta, who discussed the death of a girl who took part in a choking challenge she found out about on the app. Unfortunately, this is one of the many devastating examples of children losing their lives because of content promoted by TikTok. <clears throat> Congressman, as a father myself, when I hear about the tragic deaths of my question young people, is, do you, it's heartbreaking. Do you heartbreaking. find that good faith moderation? Well, Congressman, uh, Section 230 is a very complex okay, I'm, issue. I'm, you know, yes or no? I, we are very focused on safety, and okay, all these I'm, dangerous I'm, I'm challenges are move no. when we find them. TikTok says it rigorously screens content that could harm children and has spent more than $1.5 billion on a security project to store TikTok's U.S. user data and keep it away from others. Last week, the company said that President Joe Biden's administration demanded TikTok's Chinese owners divest their stakes in the app or face a potential ban. China's Ministry of Commerce said Thursday that forcing a sale of TikTok would seriously damage the confidence of investors around the world when it comes to investing in the U.S. and that China would oppose it. North Korea says it conducted a new underwater nuclear weapon test preceded over by leader Kim Jong-un. This is the first time the regime has made the public development and testing of such a weapon. North Korea tested a new nuclear underwater attack drone under leader Kim Jong-un's guidance this week. The North State-run Korean Central News Agency reported that the drone cruised underwater for over 59 hours before detonating in waters off its east coast at a mock target intended to simulate a South Korean U.S. military port. The exercise, it says, is to make surprise attacks in enemy waters and damage the naval capacity at major ports. The report also says that Pyongyang fired four cruise missiles on Wednesday to practice carrying out tactical nuclear attack missions. The missiles each carried a test warhead simulating a nuclear warhead and flew 1,500 to 1,800 kilometers. Each exploded at the intended 600 meters in the air, it says, and that the missiles proved 
their technology and reliability. The South Korean military has confirmed that North Korea fired four cruise missiles off its east coast on Wednesday when Seoul's military observed such activities. This round of North's weapons testing comes as Seoul and Washington ramp up military drills. The two carried out combined military drills from Monday to Thursday, holding their largest field training exercises in six years. The drills played out live-action scenarios with the U.S. deploying its striker brigade. In addition, the USS Makin Island, a highly versatile U.S. combat ship, is currently docked at South Korea's Busan port for the largest combined amphibious drill in five years. The Sangyong drill involving the U.S. Navy and South Korean Marine Corps will start next week. Protests in France are intensifying as President Macron remains adamant over his plans for the pension reform. Bordeaux Hall has been set on fire as French protests continued over plans to raise the pension age. And major unions in Paris are calling for nationwide strikes impacting the country's transportation, refineries and schools. Tonight, anger and frustration pouring into the streets of France. Some 800,000 people marching through Paris as the country saw its ninth nationwide strike. It's not fair, it's not, uh, I think it's, it's not very really respectful for, for us. Residents outraged that President Emmanuel Macron pushed through legislation, increasing the retirement age from 62 to 64. <laughs> Agitators turning violent, smashing shop windows, setting trash to newspaper kiosks on fire. Riot police quickly moving in, driving back protesters, launching tear gas and deploying sun grenades. C'est inacceptable. Ça, ce n'est pas la démocratie. The Eiffel Tower closed, train service and flights disrupted after workers went on strike. In the western city of Rennes, clashes broke out and police blasted water cannons to disperse crowds. And in Nantes, more cries for Macron to withdraw the reform. La rue a une a une a une a une légitimité en France. Si Monsieur Macron n'est pas capable de de se rappeler de cette de de cette réalité historique, je ne sais pas ce qu'il fait là quoi. Enfin, je, je... The French president breaking his silence on Wednesday. Au moment où je vous parle, mm. est-ce que vous pensez que ça me fait plaisir de faire cette réforme? Dites-le nous. Non. Macron standing his ground in an interview with French journalists, saying he won't budge on raising the retirement age. Et plus on va attendre, plus il se dégradera. Donc cette réforme, elle est nécessaire. But his TV appearance only fueling frustration and strikes. Oil refineries in the south drying up as thousands of tons of trash line the streets of Paris. On n'a pas d'autre choix que la grève et bloquer l'économie jusqu'à ce qu'il cède et qu'il retire son projet. The disruptions also impacting schools with a quarter of the nation's teachers walking off the job. This is just the latest act of defiance in a season of protest that citizens say won't be ending anytime soon. Turning over to Ukraine, more support is underway for Kyiv as the European Union is set to supply a million rounds of shells. This comes as Ukraine gears up for a major counterattack against Russian forces. As the war in Ukraine goes into its 14th month, the city of Bakhmut is the latest military hotbed. According to a high-ranking Ukrainian official on Thursday, Russian forces are now exhausted in this key strategic location, where Ukraine is planning to launch a much-anticipated counterattack very soon. Meanwhile, on Thursday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky addressed EU leaders in a video, during which he urged Europe to increase and speed up its supply of weapons, as well as impose additional sanctions on Russia, saying otherwise the war could drag on for years and have a negative impact on surrounding European countries. If Europe hesitates, the evil may have time to regroup and prepare for years of war. It is in your power to prevent this. It is in our common interest to free Ukraine from Russian aggression this year. Earlier in the week on Monday, the British Defense Ministry confirmed it would provide Ukraine with armor-piercing rounds containing depleted uranium, to which Russia threatened to escalate attacks in Ukraine. On the same day, foreign ministers of the EU endorsed a plan to send a million artillery shells to Ukraine over the next year, which was approved for a fast-track purchasing procedure. This plan was given political blessing at a summit in Brussels on Thursday where EU leaders held talks with UN Chief Antonio Guterres to discuss the scope of support, from additional military aid to Kiev to expanding sanctions on Moscow.
We want to be a fully committed player when it comes to providing support. We want to act as Europeans in terms of producing, manufacturing ammunition and delivering ammunition to Ukraine. Ukraine will be hoping these supplies can shift momentum in Bakhmut, with a Ukrainian official suggesting a counterattack could come by the end of this month or by early April. Despite the mounting opposition of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's judicial overhaul, the leader has carried on with the reform proceedings, even as the action causes instability in his ruling coalition itself. In the face of continued mass protests and signs of cracks in his governing coalition, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pressed forward Thursday with his plan to overhaul the country's judiciary. In a televised address, he said his goal was what he called democratic reform to, quote, restore the proper balance between the authorities. It comes after Netanyahu had summoned Defense Minister Yoav Gallant after reports the top-level cabinet member wanted to call a halt to the planned overhaul. Israeli media said Gallant had planned to make a statement seeking to stop the reforms in the name of maintaining order in the military ranks, where some officers and reservists have vowed to refuse orders over the overhaul. The apparent willingness of Gallant, a senior member of Netanyahu's conservative Likud party, to break rank, drew criticism from a far-right faction in Netanyahu's religious nationalist coalition government. The proposed judicial overhauls would give the government more control over appointing judges and limit the Supreme Court's ability to check the prime minister or the legislature. Proponents say the high court has too much power. Critics say the court's independence is a vital part of the country's democracy and warn the overhaul could benefit Netanyahu, who faces corruption charges. He denies any wrongdoing. The proposed overhaul has prompted weeks of mass protests in the streets. Police in Tel Aviv on Thursday used a water cannon to disperse demonstrators who had blocked a highway. In Jerusalem, officers scuffled with protesters who tried to push through barriers near the prime minister's residence. On Thursday, Netanyahu called for unity, saying Israelis had one country and must do everything to protect it. 25-year-old protester Karen Pikowski watched the speech and shrugged, saying Netanyahu was trying to sell them out, just so he could continue to be prime minister. We'll be back with more world news after a short commercial break. Welcome back. Transgender athletes hoping for a shot at gold in the female category have had their hopes dashed at the benefit of biological females as the World Athletics Group has voted to ban the participation of male to female transitioning athletes from the elite level female games. World Athletics voted on Thursday to ban transgender women from competing in elite female competitions and tighten testosterone restrictions for other athletes. The council has agreed to exclude male to female transgender athletes who have been through male puberty from female world ranking competitions from March the 31st uh, this year. World Athletics President Sebastian Coe said that the decision to exclude transgender women who had gone through what he called male puberty was based on what he said was the overarching need to protect the female category. The new rules will also impact athletes with what is known as differences in sex development, or DSD. The most famous might be South Africa's two-time Olympic 800-meter winner, Castor Semenya, who has XY chromosomes and blood testosterone levels in the male range. The council vote will require DSD athletes such as Semenya and Namibia's silver medalist Christine Umboma to take testosterone-reducing medication and maintain low levels of the hormone for two years before they are cleared to compete. That could keep some DSD athletes out of events for 24 months, although Cole said some could apply for a shorter six-month monitoring period. So none of these athletes will be eligible to compete in the World Athletics Championships in Budapest in August. They will be eligible to compete in other events after that six-month period, including the Paris Olympic Games next year, if and only if they maintain their testosterone at the required level. The move banning trans women come as some claim athletes born male have innate physical advantages over those born female. The majority of those consulted uh, stated that transgender athletes should not be competing in the female category. The tighter measures around some of the most contentious and divisive issues in sport 
follow a similar move by World Aquatics in 2022. Coe announced the formation of a working group, which will be chaired by a transgender athlete, to further study the issue of trans inclusion. Spain has gone up in flames with wildfires continuing to rage through the dense foliage in the country's eastern region, forcing the deployment of emergency services along with the rushed evacuation of hundreds in the area. A raging wildfire in eastern Spain has forced hundreds of people to leave their homes. Emergency services were alerted about the blaze in the region of Valencia at lunchtime on Thursday. Military firefighters worked through the night to try to get it under control. Earlier in the day, large plumes of smoke filled the sky over Villanueva de Viva, as many local villagers decided to head for safety. Given, but we know that this valley is very complicated at the time of evacuation since the roads are narrow. Three villages of more than 1,000 people are reported to have been evacuated. Emergency services said they had set up a refuge for 600 people and a field hospital. It marks Spain's first wildfire this year and follows a winter which, according to EU scientists, was the second warmest on record and unusually dry. While the month of February saw record low levels of soil moisture in some areas. Schools will be back in session for 420,000 Los Angeles students after a three-day strike by the education workers which disrupted classes and social services in the second largest school district in the United States. Schools in Los Angeles are back in session Friday after a three-day strike by education workers ended with no breakthrough in demands. Talks crumbled between the Los Angeles Unified Schools District and striking workers who demanded higher pay. Tiffany Barber, a special education assistant on Thursday's picket line, said she isn't ready for things to return to normal. Like we're going to go back to work tomorrow after this, but I'm, I'm ready not to go back. If we're going to keep having to fight, then I'm willing to do that. We're three days in and I'm willing to do some more days if we have to. Some 30,000 service workers, such as bus drivers, custodians and cafeteria workers, walked off work on Tuesday. The union says workers who earn $25,000 a year in one of the nation's most expensive cities are long overdue for a raise, a view shared by teacher Liliana Cortez. We're facing a housing insecurity, we're facing eviction, you know, uh, you know, food insecurity. A lot of our, you know, our workers are also LAUSD parents, so their kids are LAUSD students. Um, so it really impacts the entire district and um, really it's not too much to ask for our, our workers, our education workers, to make more than in and out workers asked for a 30% salary increase and an additional $2 per hour for lowest paid staff. The strike went on ahead despite the district offering a 23% pay rise along with a 3% bonus. Many workers anticipated an agreement might be revealed at the rally on Thursday, but no such news was released. It's a long process. We don't want to sign something, at least, at least my take is that, that we might regret later. You know, sometimes they, they put stuff on paper and you're so excited to sign it, and then you get a resolution at the end, three, four years, like, why did I sign that? So in my take, is, is it's better to take our time on it and get it done right the first time. LA's strike is only the latest in a series of similar work actions by educators across the U.S., complaining of burnout and low wages that they say have led to a teacher shortage in many parts of the country. Welcome back. For more news, let's take around the world in a minute. A new U.S. Congressional Committee on China held its second hearing, highlighting what Washington says is an ongoing genocide against Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities in China's Xinjiang region. Four passenger buses and a truck collided near Hong Kong Road Tunnel today, and about 70 people were injured, including children. Most of the injuries were minor. A zebra was recaptured after escaping from a zoo in South Korea with pedestrians appearing bemused by the rare sight. In a video provided by Seoul Wangjing Fire Station, the zebra was seen walking in an alley around residential buildings before rescue workers fired a tranquilizer dart at it. Miguel Tabuana continued his successful run by taking the lead in the first round of the World City Championship in Hong Kong. The Filipino, who won his third Asian Tour title at the Delhi Golf Club Open, shot a 7-under par 63 to take one-shot lead at the Hong Kong Golf Club. 
Denmark invited the Russian controlled operator of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to help salvage an unidentified object found close to the only remaining intact gas pipeline under the Baltic Sea. Three explosions last September have become another flashpoint in a standoff between West and Russia set off by the invasion of Ukraine. World Athletics has voted to end its eight-year ban on the Russian Athletics Federation, but the country's athletes and those of Belarus will remain excluded from international competitions because the World Athletes' ongoing separate ban over the invasion of Ukraine. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again on Monday as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We leave you tonight with the visuals of Budapest's magnificent opera house, where Ukrainian ballerina flutters high with her undulating swan arms in the lead role of Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake Ballet, with the audience bursting into applause. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing weekend.